When people hear the word IPO, which means a company sells stock to the public for the first time, many people tune out. It sounds like boring stock talk or something distant. But in this case, it matters a great deal to rockets, to the moon, and to what comes next for space travel. An IPO is when a private company sells shares to the public. It is like opening the doors of a family business and letting anyone buy a piece of it. SpaceX has been private for over 20 years, having been started in 2002. That is over two decades of building, failing, fixing, and flying. Now reports suggest SpaceX could raise over $30 billion by going public, with some estimates saying much more. That number is hard to picture. $30 billion is enough money to build tens of thousands of homes or run a major city for years. Here is the first reveal. The valuation being discussed is not small. Some estimates put SpaceX between $800 billion and $1.5 trillion. $1 trillion is a number most people never deal with. It is $1,000 billion. If you spent $1 million every single day, it would would take you almost 3,000 years to spend $1 trillion. That is the size of the bet investors are making. Why would investors pay that much? Because SpaceX does not act like a normal space company. It launches more rockets than anyone else, lands them, and reuses them. It runs a global internet network in space called Starlink, and it is building the biggest rocket ever made. Let's explain why this money matters here. Rockets are expensive, and building launch pads is expensive. Testing engines costs money every time you fire one, burning fuel and paying engineers in the time it takes. Starship is the core of this story. It is a fully reusable rocket system designed to fly, land, and fly again, like an airplane, not a firework. Starship is made of two parts, the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship Upper Stage, and together they stand about 120 meters tall, which is taller than the Statue of Liberty. Here is the second reveal. Building one starship is not the hard part. Building many is. Flying them often is harder, and flying them safely every week is even harder. That requires massive factories, workers, and constant testing. All of that needs cash. If SpaceX raises $30 billion or more, that money speeds everything up. More test stands, more launch pads, and more engines built per month, leading to faster progress. Launch frequency, or how often you fly, is key to reliability. When you fly once a year, bugs hide. But when you fly every week, bugs show and fixes come fast. More money means Starship could fly more often, and more flights mean faster learning and faster readiness for big missions. Starship aims to lower the cost per kilogram to orbit dramatically, cutting the current cost by 10 or more, which unlocks new markets. Here is the third reveal. One planned use of this money is something that surprises many people. SpaceX is looking at placing AI data centers in space. A data center is a building full of computers that process information, and AI systems need massive computing power. On Earth, computing uses electricity and creates heat, making cooling data centers hard and requiring water and power lines. In space, you have endless sunlight for solar power and cold space to dump heat into, making cooling easier. Putting data centers in orbit also avoids land limits, zoning fights, and power grid limitations. This idea is early and not happening tomorrow, but money allows for these kinds of experiments. For example, early space computers overheated, but engineers learned fast and redesigned cooling systems, a knowledge that feeds into bigger plans. Launching heavy computer modules and providing power to them is hard, and it needs many launches and reliability. Space-based computing could change how fast problems are solved in areas like weather, climate, physics, and AI training, representing a huge shift in scale. Starship makes this possible because it can lift heavy equipment cheaply. Without it, space data centers would be too expensive to try. Now let's talk about the moon. Another use of this money is building lunar infrastructure, which means things that stay like power units, habitats, and landing zones, not just quick visits. 
SpaceX is part of NASA's Artemis program, providing the lunar lander using Starship, which must be tested, fueled, and proven safe. More money speeds up the development of lunar versions of Starship. Lunar Starship is different because the moon has no air, so it does not need heat shields or flaps, which simplifies its design. Here is the fourth reveal. A lunar base is not one building. It is many launches for supplies, power systems, communication gear, and cargo all of which adds up fast. Starship's large cargo space makes this possible. The moon is close, about three days away, and serves as the testing ground for NASA to go back, stay longer, and build things. The money helps build tough lunar hardware, including landers, habitats, and power systems. The moon is not the final goal. It is the practice field, where everything learned feeds into Mars missions. This brings us to Mars. Mars missions require massive upfront spending with no quick return. The trip takes months, and supplies and ships must last years and be reliable. Here is the seventh reveal. IPO money could fund multiple Mars test missions without waiting for government contracts, and that independence matters. NASA budgets change with politics, and that uncertainty slows long-term plans, but private capital can smooth that out. Mars missions do not pay back in dollars for a very long time. They pay back in capability, position, and future industries, which investors must understand. Now we explain Starlink. Starlink is SpaceX's internet network in space, using thousands of satellites to provide internet to remote areas, ships at sea, rural towns, and disaster zones. Starlink already brings in revenue, which helps fund rockets, but the network needs constant upgrades, satellite replacements, and new additions, which takes money. Here is the fifth reveal. IPO money can fund Starlink expansion without slowing Starship, which is important because right now, profits from one help the other, and more cash reduces strain. Starlink revenue is what pays for Starship today. Starlink is not just about faster internet. It is about control of a global network that matters for business, governments, and emergencies. Now we talk about competition. Other space companies exist, like Blue Origin, United Launch Alliance, and China's space program. None launch as often as SpaceX, which launches dozens of times per year, sometimes over 90 launches in one year, more than most countries combined. China is the closest competitor in scale, launching often and building fast, but they do not reuse rockets at the same level yet, which affects cost and speed. Going public changes behavior because public companies must report earnings and answer to shareholders, which brings pressure. Here is the sixth reveal. SpaceX has delayed an IPO for years because public pressure can slow risky testing, which is how SpaceX moves fast. This IPO would only happen when leadership feels ready. Elon Musk has repeatedly said he values control, which allows for long-term thinking, and going public is not a choice taken lightly as it gives up some control. However, going public does not mean Musk loses control. Here comes the first big reveal on control. Owning shares and controlling a company are not the same thing. Musk owns about 42% of the private shares, but controls about 78% of the voting power, which is the key number for decision-making and long-term strategy. Companies can create different types of shares, called a dual-class share system, where founder shares get 10 votes and public shares get one vote or none. This allows founders to keep control while raising public money, selling economic ownership while keeping voting power. Think of it like a family business. You sell part of the profits to outsiders but keep the keys. Here is the third reveal. Dual-class shares protect the long-term vision, like Mars, from the short-term pressure of a stock market that thinks in quarters. What happens if Musk lost control? Risk tolerance would drop, big bets would slow, and innovation Innovation would slow. Boeing is a clear example where control shifted from engineers to finance managers, prioritizing cost-cutting, which led to long-term safety issues like the 737 MAX crisis. Musk understands this risk, which is why control matters so much. 
Public companies must be transparent, reporting earnings and answering to regulators. The hardest regulations SpaceX faces already exist with the FAA, FCC, and international bodies. Going public mainly adds financial reporting. Valuation reflects future expectations. Tesla, for instance, took many years before it made a steady profit with many painful near bankrupt moments. The pattern is clear. Big upside companies often come close to failure. Now back to systems. SpaceX's system is vertically integrated, meaning they build most parts themselves, engines, tanks, software, and even launch pads, which reduces cost and speeds up iteration. More money allows scaling this model with more factories and more parallel testing. The valuation, up to $1.5 trillion, is based on future growth, including Starlink revenue and new markets like cargo launch, human spaceflight, military contracts, and space manufacturing. The patterns show that companies that control infrastructure gain power, scale lowers cost, and early movers set standards, and SpaceX fits all three. With public money comes scrutiny. Failures become headlines and stock prices move. Leaders must balance speed and safety. Here's the eighth reveal. IPO funds will be used to build redundancy, meaning more pads and more ships, so if one fails, others can continue, which reduces single-point failure risk for national missions. AI is also a factor, as Starlink and launch operations produce data that AI can use to optimize routes, maintenance and scheduling, and placing computing closer to satellites reduces delay and improves performance. If SpaceX succeeds, it becomes more than a launch company, it becomes infrastructure like railroads or power grids lasting decades and shaping economies. China invests heavily in space and the race is not one-sided. Here is the ninth reveal. A SpaceX IPO creates a public benchmark that raises standards across the industry. Reports suggest an IPO around 2026, a strategic timing that allows Starship to reach more maturity and reduces risk before going public. The fund will be allocated to Starship acceleration, lunar base work, AI experiments, and Starlink growth, creating a loop where each supports the others. The final cluster of reveals clarifies the vision. Reveal 10. IPO funds allow bulk buying of materials, lowering cost and improving margins. Reveal 11. Hiring accelerates, bringing in more engineers and technicians to grow knowledge faster. Reveal 12. Failure tolerance improves. Moves. Losing one ship hurts less when you have many. Reveal 13. Research expands, allowing new ideas to be tested. Reveal 14. Global influence grows as countries partner with those who can deliver. Reveal 15. Long-term missions become realistic, not just possible. An IPO is about scale, and with tens of billions in fresh capital, SpaceX becomes a different kind of company, one that can build systems others only study. If SpaceX ever goes public, buying that stock would not be like buying shares in a normal company. It would be fuel for development, pushing forward very hard projects that cost enormous money before they make a profit. Imagine you walk into a shop in the early 1900s, and someone is selling shares in a company that builds airplanes. A few people buy in, and their money buys engines, factories, tests, crashes, and learning. That is the frame for a SpaceX stock offering. Starship success makes many older rockets obsolete. Starlink cash flow stabilizes risky projects. Space-based computing could tie AI growth to launch capacity. Lunar bases test survival systems for Mars. Mars missions redefine human presence beyond Earth. A SpaceX IPO is less about profit next year and more about position in 50 years. Buying the stock is a vote, a bet on a vision that is expensive, risky, and slow to pay back. If it works, it rewrites what humans can do. It is a lever on the future. Going public allows employees to sell shares, which improves morale and rewards long-term work, helping with talent retention. More reporting can also help discipline by forcing clarity and exposing weak spots, which can improve execution. The structural key remains. Ownership percentage is not control, voting power decides control, and dual-class shares preserve that control. Public listing brings money, not a takeover, to 
to protect the long-term vision. Control does not remove the real risk that markets punish failure, but it protects the vision. SpaceX sits in a powerful hybrid model between the long-term stability of state-controlled competitors like China's space program and the flexibility of market discipline. Valuation comparisons will shift, blending technology and space. The success of the Falcon 9 and the scale of Starlink have earned the trust that allows for continued founder control. If private money builds infrastructure, public money can focus on science and safety. An IPO, even at a valuation like $200 billion signals that space is no longer fringe. It is a core industry. Imagine SpaceX as a ship. Musk is the captain and going public adds more passengers. The passengers can complain or sell their tickets, but they do not steer unless the rules say so, and SpaceX's rules are written to keep the captain steering. That is why an IPO means the journey gets more fuel, not the control is lost. That belief is built on results.